Hey, what is going on guys? You are watching Matt the Musketeer and I'm here today to talk to you about this stunning, the absolutely beautiful Far Cry 3. But before I uh, climax too early, giggity, I uh, want to tell you guys a few things about this game. Now this game came out on Friday in the UK and I think it was an international release date. I'm not actually too sure. If you're one of my American friends, tell me in the comment section below if this game came out on Friday for you. I have a feeling it was an international release date but I'm not too sure. So uh, go ahead and tell me that. Now, of course, I am playing this on PC, so this is in Ultra Graphics. This is this game looking the most beautiful it can in its Ultra settings, so this game really, really is stunning. Now, that is one of the first things I want to talk to you guys about in this video. The graphics and the animation are probably one of the most beautiful things I have ever seen in a video game. The open world graphics of this game are very, very impressive. The real world, uh, real time uh, animation, the sunsets, the sunrises, the rain, the shine the storms, everything in this game looks very, very impressive and very, very immersive as well. You do feel like you're in this real tropical paradise. The graphics are absolutely stunning, which is always something that Far Cry has pulled off well. Far Cry has uh, always been renowned for its uh, impressive looking graphics. Now, if my memory serves correct, Far Cry 1 came out in about 2006 and came out only on PC, so I never actually owned that game, but I did get a chance to complete it on my friend's PC, so I have quite a lot of experience from Far Cry 1. And then Far Cry 2 came out in about 2009 and came across on all three platforms. So um, I had that on PlayStation 3. And that game, when it first came out, got quite a lot of mixed uh, responses because it had nothing to do with Far Cry 1. And everyone was saying, you know, they've just used the Far Cry title to try and improve sales for this game. But people now have got used to the fact that Far Cry just don't seem to be tied into each other at all. Far Cry 3 has nothing to do with Far Cry 1 or Far Cry 2. So that's just the way Far Cry's uh, go. So if you're new to Far Cry... Don't feel that you can't play number three because you've not played number one or two. They are not linked together at all. You can just jump on to uh, number three, number two, number one with uh, no worries of the previous storyline. But that said, Far Cry 3 does seem to herald back towards Far Cry 1 more than the second Far Cry. Once again, you're on a desolate, deadly island. But there are also parts of this game that tie back to the second Far Cry. There are once again two different factions fighting each other which you are stuck in the middle of. But unlike the second Far Cry where you were a mercenary and you fought for either side or both sides, this game you're actually tied down fighting for one side because of course the opposite side have taken your family hostage and is led by the evil boss Vars. But I won't go into the storyline and ruin any of it for you guys, I'm just going to talk to you guys about the gameplay itself. Now as you can see here I'm actually fighting the enemy right now, I've come into an enemy outpost and this isn't part of the campaign, this is just me roaming around taking the enemy outpost, there are 34 in total and that's one of the things you can do with this game, you can just roam around and just um, fight the enemy where and whenever you want and this is one of the main things I think has improved about this game from uh, Far Cry 2. On Far Cry 2 you could be given a mission from one side but as soon as you went out into the jungle every single person you came across was an enemy, whilst on this game now you actually have allies, you have uh, civilians who obviously don't want to fight anybody and you have enemies so you don't feel like you're a single man taking on the world this time. This game feels a lot more dynamic and realistic. On Far Cry 2 every single human being that saw you just opened fire on you immediately and also the AI on this game has increased and improved massively. On the second Far Cry um, there's meant to be this system of stealth but it never really worked. As soon as you unleashed one round the enemy would spin on the spot and know where you were instantly and start taking you down so that was very very frustrating. So the AI and the way the factions and the uh, gameplay has uh, changed for the better on this game is definitely, definitely improved. Now one of the key new features to Far Cry 3, which is what I'm doing in this section of gameplay, is you can now resource from the wild. Now in Far Cry 1 and Far Cry 2, there were animals that you could shoot, but there was not much more you could do than that. Once you killed them, it was uh, that was it. They just lay there dead. But in Far Cry 3 now, you kind of resource from nature. Not only do you pick up plants, so you can um, put them in syringes and use them for medical values. You can heal yourself, or you can also kind of remove your scent so certain animals won't run away when you come near them and stuff like that. But you can also build yourself further equipment. If you want to carry more ammunition, you need to build yourself a, a pouch. Or if you want to carry more weapons, you need to build yourself a new holster. And that's what I'm doing here. At the start of the game, you can only carry one of four weapons. And if you want to start carrying two weapons, I need to build a bigger holster. And to do that, I need to go and find a pig so I can hunt it, kill it, and skin it to take its skin so I can build myself a new leather um, weapon pouch so I can now carry two weapons. So I set myself a mark on the map to where the pigs are, as you saw a couple of minutes ago, and then I'm now roaming around trying to find myself a, uh, an unfortunate pig that I can take its skin to build myself a second holster. So this is one of the new things in this game. You can resource from nature to um, improve the kind of things you can carry. You can increase the amount of ammunition you carry, increase the amount of medipacks and syringes you can carry, increase your bags, you can carry more loot, you can increase your uh, holsters, so you can carry more guns, you can 
pull plants from the ground to use for um, medical purposes, as I said before. So this game is, um, you know, the opportunities of things you can do now from resourcing from the wild really is impressive. So here you go. I've uh, just splattered two unfortunate pigs, and I come across them and skin these guys, which is quite a, uh, a graphic animation there. Take his skin, come across this second fellow as he's still bleeding out and take his skin and then you go to the menu and then you can go to a craft section and you can use your crafts to then um, to build yourself a second holster. Now one of the other main things in this game is you can see there it says crafting also skills. Now how this works is on your arm you actually slowly join the game build up a tattoo or a sleeve tattoo. Now as you do missions and you unlock certain things and you take bases and you complete achievements you get given skill points and then on the skills menu you have an option of three different types of skills and then you can choose which ones you want to unlock there are things like stealth takedowns throwing grenades further sliding into cover lots of different skills and attributes you can teach your character and as you teach your player these different attributes he slowly builds up a sleeve tattoo on his arm so that's a very kind of cool uh, kind of new addition to the game now, as you can see here I'm just clicking through these menus to show you guys all these different things I can build um, that have to, all of these things on these menus have to be created from hunting and taking things from nature to build these uh, these different items. As you can see here, I'm just about to create a bigger simple syringe kit. There you go. So I can now carry more syringes from using that second pig skin that I just killed there. So the things you can do with this game now really are impressive. You do feel kind of a lot more involved in the real world of this game that you're going out and hunting and things. Now in this final segment here, I just want to show you one of the other fun things in this game. And I want to show you this because one of the things I actually heard about reviews in this game is people saying the driving isn't too good. Now apart from my awful driving here where I slide off the edge of a bridge, the driving is really fun I find. The way they've done it is really interesting. They make it so no matter what corner you're taking, your car seems to slide a little bit, and not in an annoying way, in a way that makes the animation really cool. You, you don't feel like you're just driving on your driving test as you escape in the bad guys and you're drifting through the sand. This game really does have a kind of an epic, an epic quality to it as you're driving around. Now, one of the new other additions to this game is very similar to Assassin's Creed 3, and that is the way the map is unlocked. Now, when you start the game, you only have one segment of the map, and to unlock other bits of the map, you have to climb up radio towers that the enemy have actually put blocking jammer systems on so they can't see the map and you have to climb up these radio towers and rip off the jamming system and that then unlocks a segment of the map so that does feel very much like Assassin's Creed 3 that you slowly unlock the map by climbing up these towers and kind of doing a, a panoramic view of the surrounding area and one of the final things I want to show you guys before I leave you guys today is of course a new exciting addition to sharks to the game now this is one of the reasons I've played this game for about 15 hours and only done the first four missions because um just little things like this, I really think add longevity to the game. There's just lots of little tiny things you can do like this that um, really are quite fun, like taking on uh, Jaws right here. And when you get animals like this, you can actually skin these animals as well. You can take his, uh, his shark skin. And anything that you don't have any use for, if you don't need any more holsters or ammo belts or even plants, you can actually take them back to the general store with you and you can trade them in for bullets and for money. So that's another useful uh, thing you can do with all the wildlife that you find in the game. Now, this has just been my first thoughts on this game, guys, and if you, like me, were skeptical of this game at first based on Far Cry 2, I can tell you now, don't worry, this game is very, very different to Far Cry 2. They've improved this game a lot. Don't base your judgment on this game from the previous Far Cry's. This is a, a vast improvement from number two, and I can't recommend this game anymore. Now, if you guys want to see more Far Cry 3 on my channel, stay tuned. I'll be uploading a lot more soon, and if you've enjoyed this video, guys, feel free to give me a like and a comment below, and in the meantime, thank you for watching, and I will see you soon.